So a week or so ago, I got challenged to use Xmonad, and I wrote about this in a blog post, but I got distracted by Qtile. Yeah, uh, it, it was like I was aiming for Xmonad, and I was like, I don't want to. <laughs> so I ended up in Qtile. Uh, I will end up, I am going to start my Xmonad challenge here pretty soon. That is for another video, but I wanted to talk about Qtile today because... Every time I come to Qtile, I realize how really, really good it is. And every time I go away from Qtile, I forget about how good it is, and I go back to being an i3 fanboy. Now, I still love i3. i3 is my favorite window manager, and probably always will be. There's just things about i3 that I adore. Like, I seriously love the ability to have as many workspaces as I want, easily, and I like the way that it assigns it to monitors. I like the way that they're dynamic and not created until you want them to be created. You know, all these things, really, really good. And I will always be an i3 fanboy. But there are certain things about i3 that I don't like, right? I'm not a big fan of the scratch pad functionality. Doesn't quite work the way that I want it to work. But, you know, I lived with it for a very long time and I still maintain that i3 is the best beginner's window manager out there and I think that it is very good for long-term users as well. That being said, every time I come back to Qtile, like I said, I remember how really, really good it is. So today what I want to do is talk about the five things about Qtile that I truly adore. The things that I really, really love about Qtile. Let's go ahead and jump in. The first one, and this is going to be come as a surprise to absolutely nobody, scratch pads. Now, Scratch pads are not a unique feature to Qtile. That's 100% true. i3 has them, Xmonad has them, DWM has them, BSPWM does not have them, but you could add them if you wanted to. You name the window manager, it probably has scratch pad functionality. They all do them in a little bit different ways, and that's really what differentiates Qtile is that Qtile's way of doing scratch pad is fantastic. Now, one of the reasons why it's so good is because it's very simple. Either you do have to import a Python library in order to do it, but after that, it's just a matter of setting the scratch pads and the key bindings. That's literally all you have to do. There's no adding anything extra like you have to do in Xmonad. There's no rules that you have to set really in Qtile like you do in i3. It's just a matter of setting the scratch pad, telling it what size you want it to be, and then set the key, the key binding. It's really that simple. Another reason why they're so good is because they're unkillable. Now, that's not exactly true. You can kill a scratch pad on Qtile. It goes away if you if you press your key, your kill key binding. It does go away, but it responds, right? And that's what's so good about it, especially in comparison to i3. Whereas in i3, you create a key uh, a scratch pad and you kill it. And the only way to get that scratch pad to come back is to restart i3. That's it has that's by far the worst part about scratch pads on i3. On Qtile, if I were to, to kill one of my scratch pads. All I'd have to do to get it back is press the scratch pad key binding. It'd pop back up. Now, it wouldn't remember what was in that scratch pad prior to me killing it, so it's not truly unkillable, but the fact that I can easily get it back if I were to accidentally kill it, that is so good to me. And especially after using i3 for so long, it stands out as one of those features that, man, this is really good. The second thing that I truly love about Qtile is the bar. Now, i3's built-in bar is... Not bad. I, I won't go so far as to say it's bad, but I've never cared for it very much. I always replace it with polybar in i3. I've never made an exception to that. Like, well, I can't say never. I think there was a like a small period of time that I wanted to be Luke Smith when he was using i3 and i3 blocks. But then I realized that I'm not a crazy guy in the woods. So... I'm, I, you know, I'm a fat guy in Michigan. So, <laughs> you know, there's a, there's a difference. So... Yeah, I've, I've always used Polybar in i3, and that's just kind of the way that it's always been. But on Qtile, I've never had the urge to use a different bar because the Qtile bar is so good. Now, one of the reasons why it's so good is simply because it is so customizable. You can change the position of it very easily. You can make it have gaps. You can change the width of it very simply. And it has a lot of widgets. I'll talk about the widgets here a little bit more later, but the Qtile developers have done a fantastic job of creating a ton of built-in widgets to the point where there's pretty much one there for anything that you could possibly want. And if there's not, it's very easy if you know a little bit of Python to create your own. Now, I don't know enough Python to create my own, but I'm told from those who know a little bit of Python that it's fairly easy. So 
theoretically, if I get my ass up and actually learn Python, I could probably do one fairly easily. So I like the fact that there are a ton of widgets that they have, you know, out of the box. They're included. You don't have to do anything special other than import them at the beginning of your configuration file. And you can add them very easily to your bar. And on top of that, each widget has a ton of functionality in and of itself. Each one has different parameters that you can add to it to make it behave in certain ways, how it looks and feels and reacts to, to click events and all this stuff. It's very easy to do right inside the built-in Qtile bar. And that's one of the reasons why I like it so much is because it's here. You don't have to do anything to it to get it. It's just included. Now... I understand like BSPWM doesn't come with a bar, Xmonad doesn't come with a bar, that's fine, and, and I would always add bars to them, and, and that's my point. Every time I come across a window manager that doesn't have a bar, I always add one, so that adds extra work for me to, in order to get it up and set it. Now, I call it work, I enjoy it, like, I enjoy setting up all those things, so I don't mind it, but it adds an extra thing to do, and... Qtile doesn't have that extra thing because the bar is here. I can just jump right into customizing. So the bar is fantastic. And I know I'm doing a lot of c comparison between uh, Qtile and i3. And that's just because i3 is the one that I've used the most. So that's just kind of the reason why that's happening. So the, th the third one is also not exclusive to Qtile. In fact, most window managers have this functionality, but again, I'm compar comparing really i3 and Qtile, and in i3, there are no layouts. It's a complete manual tiler, which means that you are going to be in complete control of where the window is going to spawn next. And there's a part of me that still likes that way of doing things, but I also like layouts. So in i3, I would always download and enable auto tiling so that I'd have a Fibonacci like layout. And while that's not really my favorite layout, it, it allowed me to not have to worry about where the window is going to spawn. I just opened up windows and knew that it was going to go into a situation where I could actually use them instead of just continuing on in one direction, no matter which that you know, direction that happened to be in Qtile, there's multiple layouts and it's very easy to switch between layouts and you can assign layouts to different workspaces. So it gives you a lot of control over how your layouts are, you know, functioning between workspaces and how you control them with key bindings and stuff like that. It's very, very good. And like I said, it's not exclusive to Qtile. Xmonad has multiple works or multiple layouts. DWM can have multiple layouts. Basically every window manager that has an, a modicum of dynamic capability has different layouts you know even bspwm which is kind of like a it's supposedly a manual tiler but it's also a dynamic tiler it has a, a default layout right you can and you can add more layouts to it if you want to with scripts so i think the r real reason why i like the layouts in qtile so much is just because i'm coming from i3 and i3 does not have layouts very easily so that's one of the reasons why i like it so much the fourth one on the list is one that i've switched back and forth on quite a bit and that is the way Qtile does workspaces now I'm on record saying that I like the way that i3 does workspaces I like the fact that I can assign them to monitors I like the fact that they're only spawned when I need them and I like the fact that I can have 20 of them if I want to now you can have as many workspaces as you want in Qtile I finally figured that out so I have 12 right now and that seems to be mostly enough even though i only have three empty ones right now which is you know whatever you know you guys know me in workspaces but uh, so you can have as many on work on qtile as you want but i3 does it easier mostly because it's easier to assign key bindings because the 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 names and the key bindings on qtile are kind of tied together whereas on i3 you can name them whatever you want and then assign them to different key bindings it's, it's just a little bit different right but the reason why I've gone back and forth is because I do like the way workspaces on Qtile can switch between monitors. So right now I'm looking at workspace 6 on this monitor here, the one that the camera is mounted on. I have another monitor that's over here, which is my bigger monitor, right? If I wanted to move workspace 6 to this monitor, all I'd have to do is have the focus on this monitor and then just change to workspace six and it'd switch between them, right? It No matter where I am, it, it can, it's very easy to move the workspace that I want to the monitor that I want it to be on. Now, 
you can do that in i3. There's a key binding to move a workspace from one t monitor to another monitor. It's very, it, you know, it's not even a hard key binding to remember. It's perfectly fine, but it doesn't work like that by default. And I have found over the course of the last two weeks of using Qtile and in my previous times of using Qtile that I kind of like the way this does workspaces better, allowing me to switch easily where the workspaces are on which monitor allows me to almost always point this direction, right? Uh, this is my bigger monitor. It's 32 inches compared to 27 inches. And while I do still every once in a while turn my head to see what's on this monitor, it's nice to know if I have to focus on something for more than just a few seconds, I can switch so that the stuff that I want to focus on is on the bigger monitor and I can keep my head and my neck this way instead of cranking my head over this direction, hearing my neck popping crazy nasty ways and you know having to focus on here for too long while keeping my you know my fingers this direction to keep typing on my you know my keyboard so the way Qtile does workspaces I really do like now it, again it's not exclusive to Qtile because I'm hearing the xmonad people in my comments saying oh like xmonad does that too uh true but it also has Haskell, which is a big downside. <laughs> so that I love the way Qtile does workspaces, and it's it's really good. So the last one on the list is a little bit more wishy-washy because I love it and I hate it. So what I'm talking about is the documentation of Qtile. Now, I will fight tooth and nail against anyone who says that i3 doesn't have the best documentation. i3 has the best documentation bar none. It's not even, it's not even, to me, it's not even close to any other window manager. i3 has the best documentation out there. Now, that being said, Qtiles is also really, really good. And the reason why it's good is because if you are someone who understands just a modicum of Python, you can get a lot of information from the Qtile documentation. The downside to the Qtile documentation is that it's very technical and you do have to have some idea of how Qtile works in order to actually search through it, right? If, if you don't know what you're searching for in the Qtile documentation, it's going to be impossible to find. Whereas with the i3 documentation, if you wanted to search for colors or the bar or whatever, you could do that very easily because it's all in non-technical speak. Whereas in the Qtile documentation, there's a lot of code samples, right? It, it tells you how to do things inside of Python, inside of the configuration file. And that's not something that i3 has to do. So my love-hate relationship with the documentation of Qtile is that it's very, very in-depth. It has all the stuff there that you want it to have, but it's also a little bit too technical for a lot of people. So I put documentation as the fifth one because it is very, very good. Not i3 good, but still very, very good. And of the of all the window managers that I've tried, i3 and Qtile, by far the best documentation. Like it's not it's not even close. I know a lot of people. Again, I'm I'm, I'm picking on the Xmonad guys, but the Xmonad guys love to say that Haskell and Xmonad have has very good documentation, and it's okay documentation. But again, you got to know a lot of Haskell to to have any clue what's going on with that documentation, right? It, it's very, very technical in, in, in pros and in, in, in examples and stuff. So, and, and justifiably, because you have to know Haskell in order to use Xmonad. So that's not really a downside. It's just compared to these two, which are at least a little bit user-friendly in the case of Qtile and very usually user-friendly in the case of i3. It doesn't really compare. After i3, Qtile, and Xmonad, the documentation for basically everything else sucks. Uh, DWM has no documentation whatsoever. <laughs> like they're actually anti-documentation. They don't want new users to use DWM, so they they didn't do a good job of documenting things at all. Like patching and stuff has one page. Actually, the and the hacking page on DWM is like one page completely. It's not just patching. So DWM doesn't have very good documentation at all. Uh, BSPWM has documentation, but you have to know that it exists. Uh, it's all in man pages, right? It's not online anywhere that I've found unless it's online as a man page. Uh, and so you have to know that if you want to find the documentation for BSPWM, you have to go find the man pages for BSPC, which is, you know, an abstraction that not everybody gets, right? It took me a long time to realize that, hey, BSPWM does have documentation, but you have to go searching the man page for it. So yeah, the, all that stuff is beside the point. The documentation for Qtile is, is really, really good, and especially in compar comparison to some of the others out there, 
it's it's great. So those are the five things that I really, really love about Qtile. Probably the scratch pads and the bar are the two that I'm I'm most happy with right now. I'm finding it really hard to leave, right? I have this Xmonad challenge that I've been asked to do, and some of my you know, procrastination is because I don't like Hexmonad. I'm not a big Haskell fan. Okay, I like Hexmonad. I hate Haskell. I, sh I should put that the other direction. I, I can't stand Haskell. So I'm, I'm dreading that. I I've said I'm going to do it, but I'm, you know, I'm procrastinating. But a lot of my procrastination stems from the fact that I'm just having a fantastic time in Qtile, adding widgets to the bar, adding different layouts, adding different themes, you know, trying to, to make it so that the configuration file is a little bit pared down and things are sourced in different to different files and stuff it i've just been ha i've just had so much good I, i've had such a good time with all that stuff that i've you know i kind of don't want to leave um so that is it for this video if you have thoughts on qtile you can leave those in the comment section below i'd love to hear from you you can follow me on mastodon or odyssey those links will be in the video description as always you can support me on patreon at patreon.com slash the linuxcast links for libera pay and youtube will be uh, in the video description as well if you'd prefer to support me on those platforms thanks to everybody who does support me on patreon you guys are all absolutely amazing without you the challengers would not be anywhere near where it is right now so thank you so very very much i truly do appreciate it seriously guys just constantly blows my mind that you guys support me and it's just amazing so thank you so much for your support thanks everybody for watching i'll see you next time